I was not present. I will abstain. Andrew abstaining. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kevin, what do we have in front of us? Uh, well, why don't we'll do parks and recreation first. Sure. Uh, the first item we have on there is a resolution, and I will turn that over to uh, my director, Dean Moore. First request I um, a request to appropriate uh, 70 uh, excuse me forty five hundred dollars out of the excuse me the, uh, the reserve uh, a 880 uh, to up beyond the farm repair and improvements uh, uh, for funding to fix a uh, some of the roof around the building um, yes I apologize so it's coming out of it we're gonna appropriate uh, 4,500 out of A882, uh, the repairs, A711413 at Up Yonder. Uh, the purpose for that is the, the roof has actually passed its life expectancy. Uh, there's no uh, weathering shield on it. The, the flashing that's up on the building uh, wasn't installed appropriately whenever it was done last. And the reason it's a critical component is that building is where we house all the materials for the programs. It's where we do the day-to-day transactions for everyone who comes to the grounds, uh, so on and so forth. But, uh, it's, it was something I think that should be addressed for that building uh, <laughs> after my first walkthrough and my, my first round of the grounds. Yeah. Um, let's bring this forward uh, first, uh, Mr. Merlino, Mr. Dickinson, and second to bring this forward uh, for consideration. Just a couple of quick uh, things. That, that house needs a lot of work. Uh, Dean and I have been talking about it along with Christian. Uh, there's a lot of repairs that need to be done up there. The fortunate for us is that there is a reserve. Uh, there's a fair amount of money in the reserve. We're not gonna use it all at one time, uh, but over the next year, we will be bringing a couple other of these to committee to do some of the siding work and other items on that building as well. Uh, so, but this, it's especially the roof part with the leaks, uh, it's important to get this done before we go into the winter. I'll make, that motion. I'll make that motion. Right? We're already having right. okay. uh, uh, Frank. How much is in the reserve? Uh, I believe there's I believe there's a hundred and thirty thousand dollars in the reserve. And, and, and just to make everyone aware, Bob Yonda is run the funding of that is not through the county, it's through the trust. Uh, it's trust money that's in there. So if there is leftover trust money at the end of the year, uh, typically what ends up happening is it, is it gets put into the reserve. So if there's money left over, that's where, where it ends up being. Uh, and we decided that siding is a big part of that because we have a lot of lead-based paint uh, issues to remove that and that would be a significant amount. So we will probably just reside uh, the facility up there. Uh, and again, the roof, we've had some significant leaks in a couple areas, so we wanted to get that repaired as well. So, you, so the trust is a, a set amount. Yeah. The, the, we, get, we receive a certain amount of money from the trust every year. From the trust. And then the remainder of the money that we receive is revenue from programs. Uh, nothing from the county. Uh, it's all either the revenue from programs or the trust that we receive. And they tell us typically in July what they have projected for the budget for the following year. Great. I know that these repairs are long overdue um, and that we've, we've heard about the need for them. Is this the time to maybe make a capital plan for the facility there? I, I uh, we are, Kristen and Dean are currently working on a five-year plan for the facility. So can we maybe figure out what's urgent? address that then... yes the siding and the roof those are the urgent ones right now but they are coming up with a five-year plan for the entire facility 
there, there, there are plenty of things uh, going on. The other the museum, the auditorium, the other concerns, there are things that are fine. There's no active issue. Uh, the reason the house was brought to the consideration is because of the moisture that comes to the interior ceiling uh, on occasion. So that kind of led, led our decision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just explain to me how, how this works. Is the, the facility owned by the county, but uh, the county administers the funds from the trust? or The bank administers the funds from the trust and tells us each year what we're going to get from the trust. Typically, it's averaged from 190 to 215 a year. And then the remainder comes in from the revenue from the programs. If at the end of the year, it's not, you know, if there's something in an A code in the county and it doesn't get spent, it goes back. This does not. It's money that came from the trust that stays, goes into a reserve account. Right. And in that reserve account, we can use, and it's a, we use it for building repairs and, and other items that are needed around the facility. Yeah. But, but the facility is owned by the county? No, no. it's not a county owned facility. I think the trust owns the facility. So we just, we maintain it. We run the programs up okay. there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're ready for the question then. All those in favor of the work? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, here. Thank you. Okay. Under item for discussion review, uh, real quick uh, update on the bikeway. I think uh, Kevin's circulating. We have photos to send around to you. We're two. Uh, parts of the bikeway that were paved uh, pretty much day one. I fell into a project of Mr. Benway's and our foreman's. Uh, we paved a 340 foot stretch just north of Sweet Road, adjacent to Country Club at that intersection. Um, and we also paved a section near adjacent to the Aldi parking lot, uh, about 100 feet south of the Bay Ridge or the Bay Road Bridge. Um, soil them, seed them. Thank you to Warren County Soil and Water. They uh, hydro seeded the project for us. Those are closed up. Um, certainly happy to take any questions on that, but that's they were they were needed as well, uh, if you don't mind. Um, the section north of Sweet Road has a long section of cedars on the side. The surface was pocky. The weathering had started to take an effect, and once in a while you get a little moss creep again. So that was an essential area to certainly do that I gleaned from the project before inception. The other uh, very similar situation with the Aldi section that was about 120 feet that was paved. Uh, that was not necessarily because of the shade, but uh, there's a cross culvert for stormwater that uh, would have an impact on the underlayment. It's a road, it's a road discussion. You don't want water on your road. So um, that actually pitched and heat had some bumps in there that was a safety concern. So that was addressed. Yes. Uh, Dean, uh, is this pavement compatible with, with the existing bike path? Yes, it is. Yep, it was the same type uh, type seven that was used in the past. Okay. For the a tighter, I'm learning the lingo. It's a tighter, it's a tighter, tighter material, so better density. Yes. Finer paper. What's next? Uh, the next item we have on there is I can probably go through it just real quick, or uh, Dean can. We have trunk or tree coming up. Uh, that up yonder that, that Saturday, October 29th, and it goes from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, and the, the flyer's in there for everybody to review. To review. Um, the next item up there, I want to kind of add an item. Before we get into budget discussions, I have Andrew from uh, GLAMP ADK here, and if the committee will allow, he'd like to kind of give us a, a update on, on his year this year and what he's looking at going forward. Sure, without objection, sure. Thank you. Be my guest, step to the podium, please. Thank you and uh, good morning. I uh, appreciate you guys. I didn't get the opportunity to thank for the uh, the extension and acceptance of my my bid for COVID for reopening in 2021. So thank you, uh, the members, for allowing that. Uh, uh, made the facility our, our little home now, and I uh, appreciate that. And uh, just trying to make some tweaks and improvements, and kind of possibility to add some maybe some longevity and some uh, you know some some call it place our home for the next couple of years. So one, one thing that we want to maybe discuss is the option to have a, maybe a, a contract for a three-year contract to, rather than an auto renewal, just to kind of give us a little peace of mind um, and uh, you know, know that we can 
come back year after year without being kicked out of there. I mean, it's quite a task of moving everything in and out. So um, that's that's one thing that we want to kind of just discuss was the option to uh, have a, a two, three year contract. Uh, we have been making some slight improvements there, not significant, but some things that could help the county out. One thing, we, we brought uh, internet into the one building that we use for Wi-Fi. And we actually have Wi-Fi now to the pavilion that is available. So once service is activated, any vendor essentially after us now has usage of that, even for the garage sale uh, that could be done. So that's something that we took on. We have it there, just have to put the equipment activated again. But things like that, like uh, I guess like a joint venture with, uh, with the county to show that we're willing to kind of participate in that and help. Uh, we've done some other things within the little, I guess, sugar house that we use as a concessionaire. We put a little kitchen, some sinks in there that's Department of Health approved. Uh, so moving forward, if we want to open that up to use for servicing food, we use it basically for washing our stuff uh, for our staff members, but things that I don't intend to pull out um, after my contract is up, just kind of good faith to, to show the county and the, the residents that were willing to kind of help make small improvements without having to seek a huge approval to do so at any any cost. So uh, just showing, like, like I said, a good faith that we're willing to participate and help. So that's one thing, like I said, to extend the offer out to maybe a two, three year contract. Um, some other things that came to mind as we're working and using the facility. Uh, we have like a volleyball area on the on the property that we use. It's a little hard packed that sand. So if there's a way that we could possibly maybe there's already sand there. If it was even just tilled possibly that or it'd be okay to till and use that and make it more of a beach area. It's in the we use the property the area outside the bathrooms. Uh, it's not like it would be ripping up soil and grass. It's already there. It's a spot that's not being utilized for anything other than that. So. Uh, that would be one suggestion um, uh, moving forward with utilizing the little sugar house as a kitchen, uh, a heavier duty breaker to put in, to put in a possible electric stove would be something that we could use. I think there's enough panels in the box. So I think it's literally just putting in a breaker to do so. Um, uh, washer and dryer service, if we can have one on property, uh, could possibly be used in the little maintenance room between the bathrooms. Uh, I think, you know, it's pretty accessible. It's all the water and drainage is all right there. So I don't think, again, it would be costly to do that if we just have like a stackable washer and dryer or the access to put a washable and, and uh, washer and dryer would be great. Um, and maybe the option to put in uh, a couple other power points on the property so we don't have to run large lead cords that could become uh, hazardous for trip or uh, water. I mean, we everything we use is approved by uh, the electrician for the county as well as fire. Uh, this is a special SJO wiring, but still having wires running the length of the fields, I'm not really a big fan of. So if there's a way somehow to put an outlet here and there to reduce that that length um, would, be, would be ideal. Um, other than that, I think uh, I would also, I know we're working around the more important things, we're working around uh, Ed Zerbo, I believe his name, for the Warren County bike or the Warrensburg bike rally. I'm not sure what his plans are moving forward, but I don't know if that's coming to its life expectancy. I don't know if that's still happening. I know Ed's not doing well, he's been in the hospital as far as I know. Uh, but if that isn't happening, we would be interested in starting our season earlier, if not for set up but also for having uh capturing some of that memorial day weekend where we can bring in some revenue and some guests for that 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 end of may, uh, may as well as uh you know, being able to prep two weeks sooner i mean because we're literally as soon as ed's gone we have a week to to set up uh like almost 200 beds and decorate that pavilion and it's a lot of work so if there's a way where we can lengthen that out uh, i'd be happy to do so um, you know, the, the team has been nice and cordial uh, to allow us to leave some picnic tables and some of our exterior stuff in the barn. If there's a way that we could also leave some of the, the stuff in the property, nothing that would be damaged or, you know, just like some of our stuff that we leave in the, as we call the store, some of the stands and counters and things that 
don't really cause any problem if there was any issues with them, that would be great as well. Because the quicker we can get things set up and turned out, the quicker we can draw revenue back in and, and uh, have guests come in. It's, so it's, I'm not trying to take advantage of free storage or anything, but just being able to utilize my time and my, my staff's time and get things turned over as possible is kind of how it is with that. So those are kind of the points that I had. Otherwise, uh, we're pretty happy with calling the fairgrounds our home. Uh, we'd like to continue that, uh, like I said, for at least next three years. Um, and that's kind of all I've got. I, I just wanted to add is, is one of the things that Andrew has in his contract with Plant ADK is that, you know, under my approval and if we have had any issues, I would let the committee know. Uh, I can tell you it's been a pleasure to have Andrew and his group there. Uh, they have, I've had no calls, nothing whatsoever. Uh, they've been a pleasure to work with uh, and they've done a good job. Uh, it didn't seem maybe as busy this summer, but I, I definitely heard nothing but good things uh, from everybody, and it's a joy to work with them. Very good. So tell, tell me where we are. It's got a, he's got a contract now. How long does it go? His contract, I believe, for this year is up. Yeah, right? so we did, I think it was a one-year contract, and there was auto renewal every year after. Yeah, That's and the only reason that it wouldn't auto renewal is if there was an issue that we we had come up like either my parks and rec director or I have heard something that we would come back to the committee and tell you, we don't want them back, but that's not the case. Do you have an objection to extending this contract? Absolutely not. For Absolutely. more than a year? It, I don't think that's my choice, but I don't. Well, well that was one. The only thing I would just question, I think some discussion with the county attorney would have to take place here. These are public park plans. This is a type of franchise arrangement, I guess, is the way to think about it. Um, you know, at the moment, if for any reason whatsoever we terminate the relationship, we can um, after a year, on a year-to-year -year basis um, with the franchisee. Um, I think there's um, some discussion that needs to take place in 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 that regard. Um, that's not to say that some of the suggestions and needs of the franchisee can't be accommodated, perhaps storage, all of these other kinds of things. As far as the term of the arrangement, I think that's something that, um, you know, we would want to, you know, get a strong recommendation on. Um, the other thing is the, um, at, at what point, um, uh, we had how many extensions? At what point would we have to go back up to the uh, bid competitively again? Is there is there an end date? I I I want to say I, I thought Andrew it was this year. Was it not for a rebid? For yeah, I, I believe it was you because this is your third year. This is my second. Coming, I'll be coming into my third. So year. he's got. I think he's got one more year on his extension for another year before we would have to put out another RFP. You see my point. My point is the competitive side to this as well, a bidding side to this. There's um, things that I think, Kevin, you, you, you'll need to work through with. Yes. Thank you. Um, is is this actually designated parkland? It's considered parkland. Yes. It is. So it's it's parkland. Yeah, Are there uh, by state DEC and Office of Parks and Recreation? Is it? Are there deed restrictions on it? No. Just Run designated parkland, which yeah. which is a lot of restrictions in and of itself. So I, I I he has been a wonderful partner, and as you know, probably most among all of us, I'm I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I'm very conflicted about this proposal to extend it over multiple years for a lot of reasons, not the least of which being that this is land that is not on the tax roll in the town of Warrensburg, and. Um, you know, we're, we're in an agreement that is pretty economical for the vendor. Um, uh, but, you know, at what point does that tip over into not being beneficial for the town that it's cited in? I, I know that they frequent restaurants and whatnot, but I mean, you know, if we're, if we're going to permanently encumber this property, then I think we need to really look at it as, as is it of no use to the county anymore? And, and should we dispose of it entirely? 
Okay. You know, I, you know, but that, but um, that's what I'm saying. Permanent encumbrance equals. I think that was considered at a certain point in time, and there has to be a, a whole process of replacement. And it, 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 it's not that's not in the cards. I think the point, my recommendation at this juncture would be that um, that we begin to make plans for uh, a rebid and perhaps under the same terms that we presently have, but provide the operator you know as much flexibility, Kevin, as we can. Uh, but um, I guess what I'm saying, there is a line here, and I, and I just want to be careful that we, we, don't, we don't cross that line in terms of general public access. I, I believe, in, and the Supervisor Conover is correct, I believe there was a one time that we were going to try to sell this facility to the town of Warrensburg, and since it is parkland, there's a significant amount of red tape to go through for us to even think about doing that. Uh, we don't use the facility for the most year except for two things. We use it for the Warrensburg bike rally and we use it for the glamping. And uh, we used to use it for the 4-H, but I believe now they've kind of been using the Cornell, the new facility at Cornell Cooperative Extension. When we bid it out, nobody else responded either, right? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, so, I mean, I think the idea of providing as much flexibility as we can within the uh, provisions uh, in the intent of the parkland provisions, I think that's a balancing act here. And we've done a very good job to this point in time. Um, so, maybe Kevin, you could uh, take this forward with the county attorney and with the, and the, and with the uh, operator and um, Back the committee with uh, how you see this unfolding. Um, we, we have one more year, but uh, we shouldn't let that languish. I mean, if we're going to be back out on the street, we need to know have a schedule when we're going to be back out on the street. And if we're going to begin to offer storage, the specifications change. In other words, we're going to allow certain access to our facilities, whether they be kitchen or whether we're going to storage or uh, year round storage or that kind of thing. That should all be part of the, what they know they're getting. Andrew? I think Supervisor Straw was ahead of me on this one. I'm sorry, uh, John. <laughs> uh, Kevin, is that tied in with the municipal sewer? No, it's not. They you still use talking it. about laundry, and we got more people up there, and you got an on site septic system. I'd be a little bit concerned because I'm going to guess that it's an H system. Uh, it is an older system. It doesn't see even a portion of what it was designed for. I will tell you that. We did the calculations when the, the other glamping company was here and they didn't even, weren't even close based on design of reaching capacity of that system. We could, if, if there was a sink, sinks added and a washer and dryer, and we could kind of do an approximate or estimate how, what the use would be. Yeah. But I don't think it would tax the system that's there. All right. Not to interrupt the, I'm sorry, the, proposed washer dryer would be one washer and dryer to basically do towels and small insignificance and not not to run all of our laundry <coughs> through that facility That's all right well thank quite you quite taxing yes yeah, so we wouldn't do that no all right andrew thank you well thank you for uh, andrew. one quick question so, i was well, on the I'm, improvements you were suggesting yet for things you you wanted to implement or you want yeah, to either it could be it could be joint i mean i'm not i mean literally if it's just bringing sand or tilling up the sand i would imagine that's pretty insignificant cost especially if the county has access to it if it's me paying for it or doing the labor whatever it might be i'm 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 not asking for tens of thousands of dollars i'm just looking for a few small insignificant i feel uh changes or upgrades that would help but yeah it would be it, it could be a joint uh, share is what it is. Uh, it, it, whatever the, if it's having Frank the electrician help and I'm covering his costs to do that, then so be it. That's, you know, it's not, I'm not asking for everything, just, just some help to improve it, to make it overall. So whatever that came out to, I would imagine it wouldn't be delegated and handled now. It would just, it's getting it out there, having the conversation and seeing how that shakes out is what I was basically trying to do today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, two things. One is that as a park, it would take an act of the legislature in Albany to sell it. Uh, and good luck. Well, uh, we, the we other can. part is I did participate with the motorcycle event up there in Warrensburg. And 
it, the vendor level was a little bit lower than previous years, but that could have been just an off year. Um, you know, otherwise its attendance appeared to be moderate to me. Just to address that real quick and, and Andrew's question, uh, as far as we know, Andrew, uh, Ed Zibro is coming back next year for the Warrensburg bike rally. Uh, I believe he has, yes, he is not doing well health wise, but he does have somebody else doing some of the work for him. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to move because I believe that uh, Americade is moving back. So that, if that's the case, Ed might follow suit with what they do as well. Correct. So I, would push them I, back. I, I do see proposed dates for May 29th through June 3rd. So let that be known that I would look to start moving in June 4th and um, for to start setting up is what I would be looking to do if, if those dates were accurate. Yeah. No, I don't think we're going to negotiate it here today, but I think whatever uh, modifications to the agreement, Kevin, you think are appropriate, you know, um, and any committee members that have any thoughts on this, Kevin, let Kevin know your thoughts and, or any other supervisor and we can you know, get to the best place for you guys. And Andrew, myself, and maybe maybe uh, Director of Parks and Rec, Ian Moore, can sit down and kind of discuss those with the county attorney. Okay, very good. Thank you. What's next, Kevin? I believe the last item that we had on there was summary of budget. Uh, if you'll go to the first page of my summary 2023 budget uh, and go down to A7110 through A7113, you'll see the uh, increases and or decreases that we have. Uh, as far as parks and rec go, you know, like every other department's uh, seeing, it's increase in salary and benefits. And then uh, maybe if they get another piece of equipment next year, it'd be a little bit of an increase to their budget. Uh, up yonder, there was a decrease in benefits. Uh, up yonder, bed tax is remaining flat. The stone mill grant re remains flat. And then the railroad, there's a uh, repair of a heat pump in the office or the, uh, yeah, the office uh, house up there. Uh, that we're going to have to um, take care of. And then again, some minor increases in the heat uh, and electrical going into next year. The last item we have on there is referral pending items. And I think I can turn this over to uh, Supervisor Hogan, because I believe last night they finalized this. We Hi. didn't finalize, but it gives me <laughs> tremendous pleasure to say that we did start the process. Okay. Um, Dara surveying presented to the town planning board, the subdivision. It doesn't look like there's any impediments, so it's just a two-step process. We'll take care of it in a month. Finally. Great. Thank you. Take care of you. Can we move that? Mm -hmm. Can you take care of there? What do you mean? Supervisor Workforce or Chair McConnell? Dara, yeah. they're wonderful. Yeah. 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 Well, we require action. Uh, I think I, yeah. I got to look back, but I thought we had off fix ahead of time. That's what got us to the But I will check. I would say that if, if the items that action needs any action for in county needed to be taken, have already been taken, fine. If not, Thank you. We go to DPW. <coughs> uh, well, before we leave Parks and Rec, uh, Don, is there anyone uh, wishing to comment? Hi, Chair McConover. No, no comment on YouTube. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, uh, Mr. McGowan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is, I got uh, a few since I have to wait uh, to the end, which I really don't mind, but uh, this is for granting. Um, have, you, have you ever thought into a year round? Yeah, that option is there. Yeah, it's been thought about since quite a task and the plant board's position, but I think it's. Well, I'm, I'm thinking maybe not a full unit, you know, or a full setup, but a, you know, obvious that it's less, you know, some people are just not as, as crazy to uh, want to uh, sleep in the elements under, you know, propane. And, but, you know, I've been in some of these uh, yurts that uh, really are just phenomenal. And uh, it's something that is becoming really
probably more popular all over, yeah. and especially for the adventurers because it looks so nice up there when you do it in the summertime. You know, a couple of maybe the state uh, to try it out, just something uh, in the contract wise. Two, um, I can't really remember how much room the motorcycle um, that takes up, but is there a possibility of being able to get a couple set up there where you could piggyback on to maybe some of those motorcyclists like to uh, do your stuff, something to talk about? I'm just thinking. I, I think it's such a great adventure and for something that sits, you know, or, or the facility that sits, you know, and waits, and we have someone here for something that we can accommodate. Some of the things that you're asking for, you know, are really small things, but it would benefit you. So I, I would, you know, it's kind of hard for us to go to the taxpayer and say, oh, we got a private adventure, you know, but if it's something that, you know, um, um, that you can do and the county can help but. I, I really, uh, I, I look at this as, because I have a friend that has them up north further, but I, he doesn't do them in the winter because it was so hard to get everything back, you know, back into them. But you kind of like right down the road. So um, he said he had good winters, but it was just too much work, especially if he had the snow. So, you know, just something to think of, um, of, of, of a year-round uh, venture. It would be nice to, you know, have things out there. Yes. Uh, uh, we actually have access to domes. I mean, we could put domes possibly out there. Um, and that's a laborious task to do so. Uh, it took, took it all off, take it back down. It's quite the task. Uh, so, yeah, there are options to do stuff to do all year round, uh, especially draw people in here in the off season. Absolutely, we'd love to. I mean, but we have to figure it out, sure. Um, I've had the conversation with Ed. Chip to share because he does utilize just the front property uh, on the road, a little island there where trees and the private bathrooms. Uh, so the whole back area can be used, and I've had the conversation to where we can go and possibly help us and help him to have tents along the tree line and the back wood line area to offer his guests and to vendors. Lodging there, so it allows us to get maybe 15 20 tents up, gives us a little head start, helps him draw some people in, and helps us get some revenue, right? I mean, that's the name of the game. So that conversation has happened. Obviously, there would be some sort of starting with like a dueling contract, you know, who's handling what, who's doing what, vacuum, shared facilities, all that stuff. So that would have to be handled, and legalities would have to be addressed with that. But that conversation has been had. So, it could be a win-win. Mean to move along, but I would say, uh, Supervisor McGowan and anyone interested in, in having a, a conversation uh, regarding this, uh, be my guest. Vendors uh, here, where uh, uh, any meetings can be arranged uh, to discuss any ideas anyone has uh, going forward. And, uh, to make sure that when we go back out on the street uh, for a bit, we, this is as complete as it can be. Andrea? I can, do you mind if I just make one quick statement? Sure, go ahead. The, the statement has been made that, that the winter is the off season, and this is an opportunistic moment for me. So, so allow me to just say that 11 short miles north of Warrensburg, winter is our season. And, and we would welcome any community that wants to join us in viewing it that way. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Kevin? Uh, we will move into. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, President McGowan. Thank you. Um, I had uh, two parts I kind of mentioned. Um, you, know, you know, it's kind of tough to, to wait to the end and then, and then be shut down and cut off, but uh, I appreciate the uh, opportunity. The, the other thing I want to talk about the bike trail is, is uh, how are we working with uh, cutting back the edge? on the roads to make it more visible. I, I appreciate the paving. I, I have been on it with my, my class eight uh, electric mountain bike. But um but I, you know I noticed uh, some of the you know the white spots and that you know the yeah. little difference in there and I and I really appreciate it. it's really it's a it's a beautiful uh, uh trailway and uh, I'm so happy. But my concerns are is the uh, really the entrance of where we'll cross the road, especially you know, um, like I know uh, the closest one I have is uh, Fred Lake. I mean, 
mean, that's a, a tight S corner. Uh, but I was really hoping uh, for safety wise. So why are we doing this for, are we cutting back those openings uh, as much as we can in our right of ways to uh, get more visibility? Okay, good question. Our next task here before we get through the heart of fall and we don't have the opportunity to work is actually brushing. We're going to build a lot of brush work here in the next couple of weeks to try and get ahead in sections that have been not addressed necessarily in the high volume of the first time. Uh, Mr. Hayes. Yeah, I was just going to add on to, uh, I had received a call earlier this year from Supervisor McGowan on some of those, and we did go out and do Glen Lake, uh, do a couple of the other entrances, and we only stay within our right of way. I can't go on to private property and start cutting trees. Uh, so anything that's in our right of way that we feel is creating a site distance they'll go out and manage. But we did a lot of the ones that you had requested earlier this year. We looked at those and where they're cut back to is probably within right away and nothing more beyond that. Is there a possibility to be able to, if, like especially that one there, Bob, and I know our right away is, is not large enough, but being able to talk to the, uh, the owners to see uh, if it's possible to cut back a little bit. You know, everything gets broke back anyway. Yeah, and one of the property owners did allow us to do a little bit of that. We had the uh, <clears throat> parks and rent guys ask them, request that of them. Uh, the other property on the other side, and I can give you the name when I go back to take a look at it, they didn't allow us permission to do that. That's right. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, and I might add that, uh, you know, that Mr. Hayjos uh, uh, or Dean or uh, that's available to. Uh, ask any questions at any time okay and sometimes even at night uh and weekends uh so and i would encourage all the supervisors that have questions to contact our department staff to ask those questions okay. right. ready to get into dbw so the first item we have in dbw is to amend the grant this is for the Amstelville road reconstruction project uh, and this is for the construction for the grant funding. Carol, let's get a motion. Bring this to Mr. Bruno, Mr. Strown, the second. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Well, I'm just wondering if we put all the Umstead Road ones together. We can, and I'll do a quick explanation if, if the chairman will allow me. The second one would be to increase the capital project for the amended grant. And the last one would be to enter into contract uh, with the contractor for the reconstruction of that project. Would you like to amend the motion? Uh, yes. Mr. Brown, Mr. Strong, the second, amend the yes. second. Thank yes. you. Any further discussion on items one, two, and three? There being none, are we ready for the question? All those in favor of one, two, and three, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That here. Thank you. The next item we have on there is a uh, a rescind resolution 408 of 2022. Uh, resolution 408 of 2022 authorized the implement, implementation and funding for the construction and construction inspection services for Amstelville Road. Uh, town of Chester, in the town of Chester, based on the engineer's estimated cost prior to the agreement being signed, New York State DOT revised the state local agreement. So it's just to rescind that one. Uh, and the, that one was attached, but we just approved it on the other end of the beginning here. We'll make a motion then. Send Mr. Strau, um, Mr. Thomas on the second for the discussion. There being none, if we're ready for the question, all those in favor of item four, uh, rescinding that resolution, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'm, I'm not opposed. I'm just going to abstain. Next item. Next item on there is a transfer of funds, and this is to transfer surplus road project funding uh, to other projects to either act as local match or uh, some of those projects that we know that we're going to go over in those projects that would cover the cost. And all the projects are listed on there, as well as the towns. Let's bring this forward for discussion. Uh, Mr. Dickinson on the motion, Ms. Hogan on the second. Are we uh, moving five through or just five? This is just number five. Just number five. All right, then we're ready for the question. All those in favor of item five, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, yeah, carry. Next item. The next item is a amend D9950 transfers of capital projects um, or amend budget with those 
with those surplus funds from transfers to capital projects. Consideration, Mr. Strau, Mr. Dickinson on the second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor of amending the budget signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Item seven. Next item we have on there is a increase to capital project for Palisades Road, County Route 26 over Brant Lake. As you all know, that project is just about wrapped up, but this was due to some uh, increase in the local match and some uh, extra construction and construction inspection costs. We move forward, Ms. Hogan on the motion, Mr. Dickinson on the second question, we, Ms. Hogan. Can we lump seven through 11? They need to be individual. They're all different projects. They're all, okay. Yeah, they're all different. Let's see if we can move quickly. All those in favor of item seven signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Item eight. Uh, item eight is uh, increased capital project for South Johnsburg Road, County Route 57 over Mill Creek. And again, this is due to some extra construction work, construction inspection associated with it, and it's to increase the, the, the local match. Okay. Sit on the motion. Uh, Mr. Bruno on the second discussion. For being none, all those in favor of item eight signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item nine. Item nine is an increase to H390, which is county bridge and culvert projects. Uh, we are using some of the that money that we just did from transfers to capital projects to put back into H390. And as you all were aware, I took money out of H390 to cover some of the engineering and costs such for county route two and for uh, County 7 Bay Road culvert collapses that we had that was not budgeted money. Mr. Dickinson on the motion, second, and Mr. Bruno on the second. Are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item nine signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carry. Item 10. Item 10 is to increase uh, capital project Johnsburg bridges. This is for 393 and this is the Glen Creek Road and Dippy Kill bridges. Uh, and this is to increase the local match funding for the project construction phase of that project. On the motion, Mr. Dickinson on the motion. Second, Mr. Bruno on the second discussion. Are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item 10 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? A carry. Item 11. The next item on there is a increased capital project for East River Drive, County Route 16, and Call Street, County Route 32 pavement preservation. It was H396. And again, this is for additional construction work that was associated with that project. Okay. Mr. Dickinson on the motion. Mr. Newman on the second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item 12. Item 12 is to authorize an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Bolton for the water re main replacement as part of the Horican Avenue over Finkelbrook uh, culvert. Uh, the county is progressing the project. Uh, we're actually, uh, I believe they're going to be paving this week. At the request of the town of Bolton, the county's contractor for the project has agreed to carry out certain repairs that they had to do with their water line. Uh, this agreement would set the following basic terms. The town of Bolton shall identify the county for any claims. The cost of the work associated with the proposed waterline main, uh, main replacement is not eligible for state aid Culver, New York. Uh, the town of Bolton shall re be responsible for the 100% cost of the work associated with the waterline, and the town of Bolton will assume the maintenance responsibility and ownership of the waterline and all the work that uh, goes along with it. And it'll be in a form approved by the county attorney. You want our first part now? Right. <laughs> I'll have the motion, Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Thomas on the second. Any, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carry. Item 13. The, I'm watching. The, <laughs> the next item on there is to authorize an intermusical agreement with the town of Warrensburg for assistance during uh, the Balloon Festival. Usually we have the town of Queensbury uh, assist us with that, uh, but uh, Dave did not have enough guys that he could provide me this year. Dave Duell, who's the highway superintendent, uh, uh, Ed Pennick from the town of Warrensburg and uh, Chairman Garrity had approved uh, guys for the use. So they had four guys come and help us during the Bloom Fest this past weekend. And this is to cover their costs when they're there. Elena on the motion, Mrs. Dickinson on the second discussion. We're ready. Question all those in favor of item 13 signify by saying aye. 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 
the last item we have on there is just kind of a summary of, again, the budget. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is I'm going to hand out the, the road construction project photos, uh, and you'll see the significant amount of work that we've been able to get accomplished during this year. The other thing I wanted to, before I get into the budget, touch on real quick is a lot of that money that we just transferred out of transfers to capital projects for all those, we're not asking for the county for any more money, whether it be out of fund balance or something else. You know, we've kept all our contractors in check. We've seen some savings on some of our projects and we're taking that money and using it in other areas throughout the county. So we're not asking for any any extra money uh, or anything from the fund balance for, uh, for those projects. Uh, so as far as uh, summary of budget items, I, I added the sheets on there for everyone. Uh, under DPW, again, minimal increases for A1490, which is admin and primarily that's in salaries. Uh, for any of the D projects, if you go down through, I can kind of give you a quick synopsis on them, but D3310, which is traffic. Stop. Oh, oh your very last pages in the, in, uh, summary of budget items right there. So the, the D3310, we had some increases because we have some extra guide rail work to, to take place next year and to stripe uh, a little bit more roads next year. We don't stripe all the 250 miles of roads. We only stripe a portion of those. But after this year, we've determined that there's a couple more that we're gonna add on the next year. So those are the increases in that one. Uh, in 5010 Highway Admin, there's a slight increase, mainly due employee benefits. Uh, in 5020 Engineering, there's actually a decrease. Uh, in 5110 Maintenance of Roads, of course, it comes in salaries and oil and gas heating. Um, and there's some minor increases in contracts. Uh, in County Roads D5112, uh, there is a decrease in County Roads for next year. Of course, we had the big year this year because of the money that was bonded for road projects. Uh, and then snow removal, uh, since we're going to the use of more brine, uh, we're reducing, uh, the biggest part of that is reducing salt costs uh, because we'll be using more brine. Uh, services to other governments, uh, not that I, I, I don't mind doing the work for any of the other governments within Warren County or any of the other municipalities, but they're just, they're, they're putting their own projects out. Uh, and using us less and less. I believe this year the only only municipality that used us was the town of Warrensburg for some paving work. Uh, transfers to capital projects, there's probably a little bit of an increase in there and that's for the local match of county bridge culvert and federal aid projects. Under machinery, there's an increase in salary. There was also probably an increase of equipment in there. Uh, we have some equipment, which was part of our five-year plan that needs to be replaced. Uh, and the motor fuel farm remains flat going into next year. And that's all I have. Oh. All right, then, Mr. Dickinson. Benefits. Benefits. Yeah. Uh, someone's not using the insurance. And I had, and, and I, I, although they're budgeted for next year, uh, I have two positions that we lost during this year, which was the uh, engineer two and engineer one. I'm, I'm not ready to eliminate those positions because we're reevaluating them. Uh, but as of right now, there's no benefits or anything. For them. How many people are you down? Three right now in engineering. Three in engineering and between uh, mainly highway, 11 other individuals in there. Thank you. I actually have one more thing and I apologize. I, I didn't get these included. I have three notice of intent to fills. Uh, one of them is for an MEO medium. Uh, and then I'm sorry, two of them for MEO mediums. And one is for an MEO light. Uh, the MEO light uh, resigned. He went to work somewhere else. Uh, the MEO mediums, both of them, uh, one was a resignation. And when asked uh, if he was going somewhere else, he, he said he was going to do his own thing. Uh, and then the other one was, again, going to another municipality uh, and not 
in Warren County. Yeah, we need to approve for all three of those. Motion to approve all three, Mr. Dickinson, on the motion. Discussion? There being none, are we ready for the question? All those in favor of the position signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, carry. The, the last items I have in there for discussion items would be Bay Road County Route 7 over Halfway Brook Bridge Replacement and the East River Drive County Route 16 and Call Street Pavement Preservation. Uh, there's some grant agreements we're waiting for DOT to provide this to us. So I wanted to say if if we were able to get them in time that I would I would try to bring them to finance. That's all we could move into. Solid waste. Okay, before we go to solid waste, uh, I'll have the privilege of the floor, Mr. McGowan. Right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'd just like to uh, reach out and, and thank um, Superintendent Hajo and the whole uh, DPW crew for, uh, and uh, the lawyers that came down from Warrensburg, uh, DPW, for the help that uh, for the balloon festival. Uh, as I stated earlier in county facilities, uh, it is a lot of work. And, and Kevin really has a great team um, along with our sheriff's department of working together and, and, and um, making sure it goes as, as smooth as possible. And, you know, she's proposed to 4,000 vehicles come onto that tarmac, um, you know, and, and from multiple directions. And it really is it's just a feat, but the cleanup afterwards and you know it's just it's amazing how they all work together so i just would like to extend my thank you and make sure you tell uh you know all that volunteered or you know came out uh, for the time it is a lot of hours and long hours and um you know especially after a full day on friday of work and then coming out and then saturday it's super long and i'll, and I'll tell you, i know we were all dragging sunday but we got through it and um and it was just a, just an amazing effort by your your department. So we thank you very much. Thank you, and I I will let the department know. And I one of the things with the town of Warrensburg helping us this year, uh, you know, since I'm short in staff, that's also why I reached out. Uh, and Ed Penick and Kevin Gary were nice enough to say yes, absolutely. But if any of the other towns, because I actually had the town of Johnsburg Highway Superintendent come to me and ask me, he goes, hey, if you guys need help next year some of our staff may be more than willing to help. And that's, you know, I do that because I, I'm short on staff this year. So it worked out very well for this year. Uh, I hope I wouldn't have to, to reach out to towns, but I, I truly appreciate them coming out to help us on that as well. John, is there anyone from the public uh, wishing to comment on this section? Hi, Supervisor Conover, no, no comment at this point. Anything else come before? No, we can move into solid waste, I believe now. I believe Thomas is here and I'm going to let Thomas kind of jump into the discussion items and I'll hit the first one. Uh, the first one is a enter into a new contract. As you know, we received the organics management uh, grant from DEC. Uh, I believe the grant was for $80,000 and it's a 50-50 grant. Uh, we have established a capital project with that, and now we put out the RFP for, for a consultant to do that work. Uh, we had done the review in-house at DBW with uh, our engineer, myself, and with Thomas, and uh, we'd like to award. And I have, again, this is similar to... Uh, similar to what we did in facilities. We were under review, uh, but now that the review has been completed, uh, we'd like to award to GHD Consulting uh, to do this work. Uh, and you have the request for the contract right now with their information on it. And it's in the packet. I just didn't have the name for it as of yet. Let's bring this forward for consideration. Um, in discussion, uh, Mr. Dickinson on the motion, uh, Mr. Stroud the second. So, where, where exactly are we trying to get out of that, Kevin? Well, okay. 
So the organics management plan is going to kind of give us abilities. It's kind of a roadmap of giving us the ability to see whether or not, and, and there's no guarantee out of this that we're going to move forward, but whether or not we initiate some type of composting within the county, whether, and, and again, they, what they will do is provide us kind of a map of and recommendations where we should go with it. Uh, do we do it? Do we take it on as a county venture? Do we, you know, they may, they may find siting of, of the facility where it should go. Uh, what makes most sense as far as, uh, you know, cost, would we be able to do it in house with current staff? They'll provide a lot of that information. So, um, I think it's a good thing. I think it's part of what we discussed in our local solid waste management plan that we turned into DEC. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, out of it, if we move forward as a county run facility, they may recommend it, recommend it, make a recommendation that it, it, it should be taken over by a private facility to do that work. I don't know, but that's what we're hoping that they're gonna do is provide us those recommendations uh, at the end of this report. So we're $26,000 short. So you had a fifty thousand dollar grant. No, we have an eighty thousand dollar grant, but oh. it's a fifty fifty. So forty thousand is from us, and then forty thousand is from New York State EDC. So we're good. So we're all set. Yeah. Did they say how long it would take? Uh, no, <laughs> not that long. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily, I want to say they gave me dates, a couple of weeks for gathering information. I want to say probably within the next six months to maybe, maybe six months. Yeah, I think what I'm thinking of the mid-summer. Yeah, mid-summer next mid year that they would have a, the final report for us. So we'd have a draft before then. So just to follow up, we're still conceivably two years from able to implement anything. Please speak into the mic. Sorry. I, you know, if, if we don't get a report for a year, it would be another year before we'd be able to do anything. Depending on what their recommendations were. And, and again, we don't know what's going to come out of that and their recommendations. It may not be anything for us to the county. It may be that they recommend a, a private group initiate it. Maybe with us helping them with funding, maybe not. We don't, we don't know. Kevin, yeah, I mean, that seems like a long time. We got a dissolution study from, from the company uh, two and a half months. We can discuss it with them. I, I, you know, we haven't, I haven't reached out to them because we didn't approve their contract yet to say this is what, you know, it's based on your schedule. Until they tell us when they can get it done. And we can definitely, I mean, that's in our, that's in our court. I can, I can make them quicker, go quicker. That's up to us. I, I think I'd have that discussion with them. Yeah. You know, we've kind of been in a hurry. What can we do for us? Yep. I don't want to push them to the point where we don't have time to do it properly. Sure. But yeah, let them move them along. Okay. Or in the middle, not just yep. I'm very uh, interested in this interested in, and I hope it's going to be part of this, the uh, the option analysis. In other words, the um, the option of, uh, that was mentioned about our uh, playing a role in the composting uh, uh, process, or whether uh, this is something that the private sector is something that they uh, can fulfill, uh, I think is uh, the question in my mind. I mean, if the private sector can fulfill this responsibility, then I'm not sure I know that we would want to get into this business. But on the other hand, if it's not something if that option is not viable or possible, then the question becomes, you know, you know, what role do we need to play and where do we play it? And 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 also the uh, the the opportunity of, of reducing by weight our uh, our trash uh, by thirty to fifty percent is uh, huge. But I, on the good side, I'm very happy that we're at this moment in time that we're uh, taking a look at this and, and preparing uh, analyze it and, and have uh, uh, you know some solid recommendations going forward as to how to uh, uh, reduce uh, 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 processable waste. Thank you. Uh, two things. One, after we approve this, can we get a copy of the proposal, please? 
Yes, you can. Thank you. And two, uh, would it be prudent for us to enter into a privilege of the floor and hear from some of our community partners before we place this vote? Sure, why not? I, I think so. Um, uh, would you like to uh, comment? You've been great advocates. Do you have anything you'd like to say at this point in time? Well, it's exciting that we're at this point in an organic community. Please, please speak up to the microphone so it can be recorded. Yeah. We can't hear you. I think you got to go to the microphone. I'm not prepared to comment on it, just that we're really, I'm from um, Zero Waste Warren County, a, a growing group of environmental activists. Um, it's pretty exciting that we're this far along. Um, the organic waste is is considerable. It's forty percent of of what could be taken out of garbage and the cost to the different towns. Um, I guess we would hope that it would be more of a partnership, private and public. I think that would be would strengthen where we're where we're headed. Um, and then I forgot what you wanted me to comment on. Just to go forward with it. I just want to add one thing of this, and as I probably should have started this in the beginning of this conversation is once we award this contract to this consultant, I would like to have, and I think it's prudent that we have a, a steering committee or a stakeholders committee uh, to be part of this organics management plan. And with Diane, and I know that Barbara Jordy has reached out to me as well on the ACEC, that uh, she'd be interested. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any supervisors that would uh, would like to take part of this, but I think we should establish, and it, whether it's a stakeholders committee or steering committee, uh, once we get in contract with this company to move this forward. Yeah, I would ask the committee members to think on that a little bit. I, 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 on the one hand, I like the idea of having a, um, a um, a group like that uh, plugged into uh, our committee operations. I think there should be strong representation from the committee, however, on that. Uh, but, um, but I don't, uh, I think that could be uh, an excellent working group going forward. Um, and without objection, I would extend the uh, privilege to uh, uh, Supervisor Bramer to uh, like make a comment. Thank you. Just quickly, thanks, Chairman. I'm not on the committee, so I'm just using this as privilege of the floor, if you don't mind. I would ask that before you award the contract that you see all of the proposals, because it's my understanding there were multiple, and I know that Thomas went through and did an evaluation of them, but I think it's important that the committee members see those for themselves as well. It's a professional services contract, so I don't think it's going to be just a simple, you know, what is the lowest bid here? We want someone who's going to be really professional and do a great job at what we're asking for and do it in a timely, in a timely manner that we're hoping to do. And just one more thing, Kevin did mention Barbara. So she is the president of the ACEC. It's Adirondack Composting Education Council, and I'm on that board as well. We're not for profit. We're all about education, and we did ask for an opportunity to look at the proposals and help weigh in on that. We have a lot of expertise in the composting world. We have people who are engaged in composting on a on a bigger scale right now. So we we asked for the opportunity to kind of look at the proposals and weigh in as you know community expert members for you. And I know Kevin had said maybe we could participate later, but I'm asking for the board that they get an opportunity to look at the proposals before you award it today. I know it'll take a little time, but hopefully we can still move forward quickly. Thank you. Thanks, oh, Chairman. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, well, let's first before Andrea, let me just get a sense on the timeline here. Is it essential that we award this today? <clears throat> this is something that. Um, well, I, I, I guess I want to back up to what Supervisor Bramer had asked as far as everybody else. There's there's criteria in the RFP to award, and the criteria is based on experience, based on whether they've done this before, whether they've done anything in Warren County. It's a rating system. We don't do it based on low bid. It's a best value method. So they were rated based on costs, uh, based on their experience, based on their staff. Uh, there's also information in there as proprietary or, you know, we shouldn't be releasing out to anyone else. Uh, so I would, and the county attorney's not here, so I, I really don't want to answer the question of whether or not everybody can get the proposals. Usually if we award it to somebody, you want to see the proposal, that's great. But then, and that's why we did the rating in-house. And it wasn't just Thomas who did the rating, uh, Supervisor Bramer. It was myself, Thomas, and we all did the rating separately from one another. 
and then brought the rating combination together and, and chose this firm. I think though the fundamental question was that, uh, that uh, since supervisors would like to take a look at the material, um, if you, uh, to the degree you can make that material available, let's make it available. Absolutely. Yep. Make it as public information and, and by all means, and certainly any input that would come back might be valuable. So I, I would strongly uh, encourage that. Let me ask you this question. Now, should uh, there be a uh, comment uh, made uh, that was pertinent to the actual contract itself, the requirement of the contract? That's something between today and then that we could we could modify. Correct. In other words, that proposals you can always can authorize it today. You're going to sign the contract tomorrow. I, I, no, no and proposals be... typically with a proposal you do some negotiating uh you know once we award it the, to the individual you award it to then you can do some negotiation of the task what they're going to do they 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 submitted a proposal based on task where with a bid you can't negotiate a bid is the number that they gave you this is different because it was done based on best value so we may have kind of wiggle room to negotiate and such and this but again to go back to and i don't want to speak for the county attorney I've run into this before with proposals is the information we don't typically put out all that information to everybody because it's 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 proprietary to their 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 company that they may not want other companies to see the work or what they're providing. So before I we answer the question of whether to go out to everybody, I'm more than willing to then that's why I said I was more than willing to release the one that we awarded. We awarded to them, but to release all of them, that information has to stay confidential. Okay, let's. Um, what we have out in front of us today, though, is the authorization to, uh, to, to with this one company. That's to, correct. To contract, but the uh, at least one supervisor would like to have an opportunity to meet with you and to go over everything. Sure. Um, I, I would assume you're yeah. amenable. I'd like to make a motion to table and uh, request that the chair convene a small committee to review. Uh, let me back up. I'm not an expert in solid waste management. Nobody sitting at this table is. Kevin, Thomas, whomever reviewed these, they're excellent at what they do. But again, they are not our, our highest and best knowledge on this topic in this county. So okay. I would like somebody who has devoted a lot more time to this topic to take an, a look at these proposals and give us some feedback and not saying I don't trust your feedback. I just think we would benefit from additional feedback. And so I'm asking to table this motion and I'm asking the chair to well, convene a small committee. Was, the idea of the committee was, was to help uh, advise uh, and, uh, on the actual contract going forward. Uh, to get to get this ball rolling, that was the idea on that. The the um, uh, I certainly, uh, I mean, it, it, we've already had some expressions of concern on the length of time. Um, listen, we've made so much progress here in so many different ways. The last thing I think we need, and I get it, people have ideas, and so the question becomes, you know, how do we um, Allow, allow for that, take advantage of that, uh, you, uh, and, and continue to move forward. So, I mean, within that spirit is how, I think that, uh, um, you know, is there a way of, of authorizing us to uh, move into uh, negotiations with this company on a final contract and run a parallel track with others, as, as, my point, as opposed to a more linear approach? You kind of see what I'm saying here. In other words, you're going to have to sit down with the consultant. There's going to be some negotiations, some process that's going to have to happen over the next 60 or 90 days. And that's what I'm wondering is that uh, we set up a sidebar track where perhaps we can um, allow for uh, individuals, supervisors, or, or, or others that may wish to have input, have that input. And then the motion could be based on. That. But you're still proposing to go forward with the motion. That's well, we I'm not comfortable voting on have, that. We don't have uh, we don't have a contract 
Yeah, is yet. We, we, we're not at that point, is my point. It's not like you, somebody bid $484 and we're saying, okay, go ahead and sign the contract. I'd like to see people review all the proposals. Sure, I get that. I got that right there. Yeah. I made a motion to table. We have a motion to table. Um, is there a second on the motion to table? There being no second on the motion to table, um, you know, let's. We've had so much harmony to this moment in time. I would sure <laughs> like to see the, and that's how we've made this all of this progress. I mean, I think we're at a, really at a critical juncture now. Um, can I, can I, I think, enter? Kevin, I think they, 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 there are some parties that would like to uh, uh, you know, meet with you to go over some things. And, and, and I guess what I'm wondering, uh, and, and I know there's broad, there's universal consensus to set up a, uh, a, a, a steering committee, if you will. I think that's a great idea. Uh, how do we get a mousetrap for us today on how we can hopefully accommodate these issues? So, you know, we can, we could, we could delay this contract, but it just delays moving forward. Uh, as far as, you know, as, as, uh, Supervisor Dickinson, you know, making sure that we get this moving. Uh, to Supervisor Hogan, I, I'm not opposed to anybody else reviewing these. You're right, between Thomas is probably more than an expert than I am, but between the three reviews that we had, the three reviews were based on criteria set forth in the RFP. So anybody else, I'm more than willing to give somebody else that, but if they diverge, take a diversion off that criteria, it, I'm, I'm, beholden to the criteria that's in the RFP. So if they say, well, I like this company because of this, that's got nothing to do with the criteria. Uh, they have to follow the criteria in the RFP, or if they don't like the criteria in the RFP, then we put on a brakes, put another RFP out. Understood, but here's my concern. At the end of the day, we, everyone sitting at this table, everyone who sits around the table in the bigger room wants a high level of public confidence that we've done the very best that we can. Mm -hmm. And so I, yes. I urge this committee to consider allowing input from people who have really devoted a lot more time but to this topic. More, isn't it more of the, uh, the work program that we're, we're discussing? Not, not necessarily agent. Agents have been fully, uh, hopefully, all agents uh, and all bids are fully vetted. At least we make that effort. What we're really talking about I think is the actual work program in terms of the products that they're going to develop that are gonna allow us to move forward. Okay, so here's a question. Was there a wide level of variability between the proposals? I understood they all, all the ones you've, you, you considered complete met the criteria of the RFP, but beyond that or within that, was there a wide, would you have deemed it a wide level of variability between these proposals? Again, they were rated on percentages and I and I don't have them all in front of me, but percentages based on cost, based on their experience with other municipalities, based on writing some of them had written organics management plans already. Uh, but some had not. But some had I think I don't think one of them had not they had a lot of solid waste experience, had not written an organics management plan. As far as cost, they were all right next to from and, and I'm I'm looking at Thomas 76 to 81. I mean, it was, they were all within the ballpark of, of cost, but it was just, it really came down to based on their experience and their experience really with municipalities and solid waste, I'm sorry, organic management plants. So is the one that you're proposing we approve today, have they written an organic yes. management plan before? Are they, in your opinion, the most experienced? You yeah. see, it's hard to ask questions when we don't know what I'm asking but, questions. But you're, but you're asking the right questions, and yes. Otherwise, I mean, I don't. I, I choose them based on their experience. I mean, that was part of the rating. I'm not choosing them because I know, I don't know anybody in this company anyway. No, but know. one of the I other know. companies submitted, but I'm not there. They've done a lot of work for the county, more transportation work. But I, I didn't choose them because they. I don't feel they had the experience, especially with organics management plans. They've had solid waste experience, closing landfills and things like that, but that doesn't relate to this. So I, 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 I feel, I think Thomas feels, uh, and I think the other engineer at review feels that based on the criteria we had in the RFP, this was the best choice. Now going forward, I absolutely think it's imperative 
for us to have members of the community participate in this plan. That's gonna, especially as you said, Diane, Barbara, Jordy, they, they're the experts in this. And I think they should truly be involved with going forward and implementing the plan, whatever that plan may be. So not to belabor the point, but in the interest of moving the process along, however, also uh, engaging with our community partners as much as possible, could I request that we, I will rescind my motion to table, but could I request that we open another public session so that our partners can ask general questions of you as I have been doing? Yep. So, I, I, and I, I think what I would say is that anyone that has specific interest in this, schedule, uh, call Kevin, schedule, and Thomas, schedule uh, to meet with them to go over everything. And, 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 and I'm sure if something comes up that's, uh, shall we say, a showstopper, uh, we, uh, Kevin, we will be the first to hear. Absolutely. It can be a freight train sometimes. Uh, and so I guess what I'm saying to you is that, <laughs> well, the question here is also in terms of the process, keep the process moving along, but also keep it welcoming. And so I would say to any supervisor or any person that has an interest in this, you know, call uh, Superintendent Hajos or Thomas and uh, schedule a meeting, come in, express yourselves, hopefully have your questions answered and um, and let's keep this moving forward. I mean, that's the correct way to do this as opposed to stopping everything while we wait on comments yet to be received. You see what I'm saying? Now there's ADI people that are expert in this. The, their concerns can be registered at any time. That's my point. They can be registered with their, and they're welcome at any time. You see what I'm you're, saying? You're asking us to vote without hearing their concerns or their thoughts on this particular topic. Well, we're not in receipt of any concerns at this point. That's why I asked for, for a moment to hear some of that. So I guess what I'm saying is that, but that does not mean that they can't comment now, or tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now. Right, but when they call Kevin directly, we don't get to hear it. We don't benefit from that interchange. Well, we can, we can, offer, as much, we can offer as much information back to the committee as you desire if you wanna know who contacts them, what their concerns are, et cetera, we can communicate that. We can communicate that to you and, and any other of the committee members. We can make that a requirement. Kevin? I was just gonna say between Diane and Mary Beth and Barbara uh, and the Zero Waste Committee uh, and, and uh, Barbara being on the ACC Committee, they email me all the time uh, and they ask questions and I'd be happy, more than happy to share any of that information with the committee. But, but we're being asked to vote today and right now. I just would like the opportunity to, uh, to ask the same questions I've had the, the privilege of being able to ask. And, and, and if, if anyone has something that's, that they feel is egregious or lacking, they, they, have to, <coughs> they can communicate that to the entire board. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, it's a question too of, you know, what the, uh, I mean, everyone bears that responsibility in terms of having good process. It's not just the committee and it's not just the board. It's all those that have an interest in the process. Wow. But I see a gentleman standing at the microphone. He's been very patient. Uh, if you could state your name, we'll extend the privilege of the floor to you. I assume it's on this topic. It is on this topic. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if it's of interest to the committee, um, I'm one of the applicants. So I thought I would share qualifications and how we fit the criteria for this uh, organic management plan. Just, just a moment. Uh, is, is, is he a successful applicant? Or? I don't know. I didn't know who he was and he didn't introduce himself, so. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure I can judge this at this stage. I mean, you, you, were, you were one of the bidders, one of the, Response. Yeah, that's correct. My name is Tony DeFazio. I'm the founder of Sustainable PR in Glens right. Falls. And we partnered with um, engineering firm SCS Engineers. I see. And the, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. If you could speak up, please. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I thank you for granting some time for me to uh, to be here today. As I said, my my firm is uh, Sustainable PR. We are a public relations firm founded and started in Glens Falls, Warren County, and we are experts in public engagement 
the criteria that was mentioned, the weighted criteria is an area of expertise that we provide. We're doing public engagement programs for sustainability related issues all over upstate New York, particularly with uh, community solar projects. So this is an area of specialty of my firm, Sustainable PR. We are the only public relations firm in the country exclusively focused on the green economy and sustainability issues. A uh, couple items you may want to take under considerations as it sounds like you're going to continue to deliberate over the uh, uh, contractor selection. Um, number, the other one I want to mention with you is that we actually have designed a playbook that is being implemented across, across upstate New York best practices for building community engagement and involvement with sustainability issues, including composting. We've actually authored a, a position paper on what it takes to build an infrastructure for composting nationally. And those are best practices that could be applied to Warren County in the organic management plan. Um, so I think we have some value add that we can bring to this picture. Now, my firm just is uh, handling or addressing the components of the RFP that speak to community engagement. The partner is, uh, has actually built an organic management plan for Sullivan County. It was successfully implemented. And as far as I know, it has been a great success. So we feel we have the number one, the focus, the expertise, and the commitment to deliver a great plan for Warren County. I'm happy to take any questions you may have, and I appreciate you hearing my comments. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and any material you have, I'd ask you if you could move them along the, to Superintendent Hayes. Yes, I actually brought copies of this uh, pos uh, position paper on composting. I could leave copies behind for the committee if so desired. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Uh, Pleasure of the committee at this stage. Um, lunch. Uh, at this stage, I mean, what's what? What do, what do we care to do? We have a recommendation from the superintendent. Was that? I need to have a motion on the floor by Mr. Dickens. We do have a motion to approve the contract. Uh, I assume after all of this, does that motion still stand? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. And. Um, but if you might uh, offer me a little latitude here as chair, uh, I, I, I think that some of the, uh, the comments that have been made, Kevin, uh, I think it's very important that we reach out uh, to these folks and uh, that uh, if there are ways to improve how we uh, proceed uh, and or there's concerns relative to especially any item that's lacking in how we're going to proceed, uh, I would ask that you um, uh, take that in and, and communicate those concerns back to the committee, if you would. Uh, you and um, that you make it a point oh, uh, between now and whenever we enter into this contract to um, reach out uh, to these parties and um, uh, so that we have uh, the best information that we have. I will. You will. Okay. And, how we accommodate it more than that. I mean, I don't. it's been a very public process. That we've had this been this has been going on now uh, for an really we've uh, an entire year. Anyone that's really had the need for desire to want to have input has had ample time to communicate. I've not received the communication relative to this, but that doesn't. I'm only one person. Um, if if there are folks that are, um, have found us and found the process and are interested in the process, and I think we're interested in what they have to say. All right, then, are we ready for the question? Uh, all those in favor of uh, proceeding uh, with those qualifications uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, one opposed? Okay, thank you. Next item, Kevin. Next item is under discussion items. Uh, I, Supervisor Thomas had asked last month that we put together a cost for the county to haul for towns. Uh, we're at a draft stage right now, and I, I don't want to present it necessarily like a hard copy to everyone yet. But based on what Thomas has done uh, and 
of course, based on the county purchasing a couple of trucks and probably adding at least uh, another couple of individuals to uh, the solid waste department, uh, the county could do it for a cheaper cost. Uh, I think for most, especially the remote areas uh, such as Edna, uh, it would definitely be a significant savings for her. Uh, the ones that would be not so much, it's very little, uh, would be, of course, for the town of Queensbury, uh, just because of the number of halls that happen for the town every year. Uh, it's, I think it'd still be, at, at, at bottom line, based on the numbers that we use, I think it would be $3 more than what you paid now. Uh, but the majority of, and I, I just give you a kind of an example, the, the bid and haul for, say, the town of Horkin right now is, $280 for cardboard, we probably could do it in house for approximately 156. Uh, and that was done again for every single town. Uh, but I, I only had uh, time was just bring a couple examples of, you know, the, 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 the differences between a couple towns so that we could present it here. But I, I want to finalize that and present it to all the towns and based on how, how we came up with their numbers, what we were using for the, the current rate for diesel fuel, cost of the trucks, yearly maintenance on the trucks, driver salaries, uh, and then the cost that we would, would put off to the towns for us to do that work. So next month we will have a final uh, that we present to committee and I'll have the kind of the spreadsheets to show what each town is paying and what they will pay in the future if the county was to do the work. Now, we have the contracts for next year and the other discussion would be with Supervisor Thomas as far as budgets. I have a truck now, but we, we concluded that we would need two and a half trucks. So that truck would be our kind of our backup. So I would need two new trucks to be able to do that hauling. Is that all included in those prices? That, that is, yep. Trucks and Capitalizing, uh, you, you're talking about roll offs, right? Coming around, yes, and picking up all the containers and bringing them. We did it so based on do it, I, the mileage. The <laughs> no, I, I'll say something supportive, I promise. Well, no, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know if everybody else is getting the same feedback, but my transfer station attendant is having a terrible time, um, with our contractors, and, and he'll call and they, it'll be a week or more before they show up. And so we get overflowing bins, and uh, so I'm very supportive of this. Yeah, the, the, the hauling cost, it, if you go across all the categories, it's the hauling cost that is uh, just uh, taking off like a rocket ship. And even where we receive, uh, even though we're involved in one year, I think if there's two or three categories on recyclables where we did receive a decrease, mm -hmm. uh, the hauling cost overall, the hauling cost is up. 15 16 percent or more so uh i think that um you know if we're going to uh think of the and, and this would be something that we would be thinking about for 24 correct correct it's okay so let's let's understand correct. the timeline on this that we're we're, we're going to be involved in this one contract with whatever hauler for at least another year so I think what we need to do is we need to really, I think, take those dollars and, and um, put them in the form of a business plan. Yes. In other words, it's going to, Bolton's going to have so many trips, they're going to be paying us X amount of dollars, uh, the town of Luzerne, whatever the town is that's participating is going to pay us X amount of dollars and um, based on their average of their of their trips and um if we're hauling it then we have to have a place to take it do we now we will yes so we we'll still have, have a disposal that. site that we'll have to take it to okay so so i think what's the sense here do we at least want to if there's looks like there's financial savings do we want to at least put this in the form of a business plan yes. I'm just going to add, I mean, and that's, that's what Thomas has done. He's done, he's reached out to every town. Uh, every town is providing the number of trips that they do for cardboard every year or, or glass to the Tony pit or wherever, maybe he's done that. Uh, I just, I want to get, Thomas and I have gone through it. To me, it's still draft stage. I want to finalize it so that we can present it to the committee. So 
Uh, I've worked him hard over this past month trying to get this together. Uh, but again, I, I wanna I wanna get a final version and we'll present that next month. That and and I would I would do it in a form of presenting it, letting everybody review it, coming back with any comments and questions after the fact. And then maybe the following month we determine if that's the route we want to take going into 2024. And I share uh, the concern registered by uh, Supervisor Hogan. We're experiencing many of the same kinds of things. All right, then. So we're going to next, maybe as early as next month, we're going to have uh, this uh, work hopefully put in a, into a, a plan form and, uh, and we can deal with it. Yep. All right. And again, this would be for something that would take place in, in um, calendar year tw uh, 2024. All right, That's great. No, I think the last thing we had on there is a budget presentation and I'm going to jump to Betsy real quick because on the, the my summary budget sheet, I I don't have solid waste on there. Uh, am I missing? It's under DPW. Right. 28. Okay, there it is, I'm sorry. So. There, there it is a slight increase in that budget, and that's just to buy a couple more containers. Because the uh, mainly the town of Hay, which they're they're tomorrow bringing, or or even today bringing some up today, but they're going to start swapping some of those containers out. So this is for container. Excuse me. This is for containers. Is the increase in that budget? Not compactors. No, not the compactors. Anything else? That's all I have. That's all you have. Uh, Don, anything from the public uh, on um, solid waste and recycling? Hello, Supervisor Conover. Nope, nothing on solid waste. All right. And uh, there being no uh, and privilege of the floor. Yes, of course. Yeah. I didn't check with Don because um, I wanted to present something. <clears throat> via the uh, uh, TV last week, and then you guys didn't meet. And he said we had to do it in person. So that's why I'm here today. So I didn't check again with Don about uh, our talking about solid waste. You're welcome. But you'll know what I'm going to talk about. It's, it's very general. Um, there's no word yet on the ARPA grant for a recycling facility for aggregating uh, marketable recyclables. Um, the first project would be the OCC corrugated cardboard, which has high marketing value. We'd bail and sell directly to paper mills with potential to make money for the towns. Whatever the decision from the ARPIC committee, we believe there will be opportunities to modernize current transfer station practices. We hope to um, reconvene the work group, including supervisors Moreno, Dickinson and Strau, and come up with a plan B for the OCC uh, project. Our zero waste committee meets every two weeks, and we just wanted to assure you we, we continue to be enthusiastic about working with public works to modernize transfer stations, find positive financial and sustainable approaches, and introduce other ideas. We're in touch with Thomas Abo on a regular basis talking about the transportation as a piece of this whole thing, everything's so connected, um, how much it costs to haul things, where we're hauling them, what markets there are. Um, I'm wondering about doing each piece separately um, misrepresents a greater potential, but we can talk about that when um, uh, Kevin completes that analysis of just transportation. And then we wanted to comment on another um, piece of the pie. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Mary Beth Myla from the town of Bolton. Um, and I had prepared a statement to read, but in light of listening to the discussion that Kevin just gave us about the county transporting materials, some of it may be irrelevant, but I would like to read what I prepared anyway and get your feedback, um, knowing your comments. Uh, 
we applied for the, uh, the public works applied for the ARPA funds. We don't know the outcome as of this moment. But I would like to, in, in light of that, I would like to go back to something that was in the local solid waste management plan that was written and approved two years ago in 2020. The primary observation, the first observation and first recommendation of that report was, um, I'll, I'll quote it, it, Warren County does not collect enough solid waste disposal and recycling data for the waste generated within its borders. Furthermore, the data that is collected is occasionally incomplete and inconsistent. The recommendation was to establish a reporting protocol which requires individual member municipalities to provide the Warren County DPW designee with biannual solid waste and recycling data collected by each municipality. So um, as a member of Zero Waste, I've tried to look at some of the data um, through Penny Cleveland in Bolton, I was able to get some data. It, I have to say it was um, in form of receipts and invoices. Uh, Chester actually gave me a spreadsheet. So I do appreciate that kind of data in a spreadsheet. And I think uh, Penny has told me that they're moving to do that in Bolton. But I wanna encourage every municipality to keep that data because it's only by knowing what we have that we can make informed decisions and do cost benefit analysis. And I, I applaud you for Kevin, for looking at this kind of, in this way, the transportation cost. But um, the, the report from Lynch, the local solid waste management report said, we really need to have a breakdown of the recycling the volume, the revenue, and the disposal expenses. And also for the waste, the same information, including C and D and biosolids. But what I'm actually asking for is that information to be organized and centralized. Each municipality has it. But in order for someone like myself to look at it, which I've been trying to do for a year, it's very difficult. And I've done some of the tonnage through requesting the latest DEC annual transfer station reports with FOIL. Soon they will be freely available on the DEC site, but up until I think even this week, if you wanted to get 2021, you had to FOIL for them. And I think as partners going forward in whatever plan we do, I think citizens and community need to have access to that information in a centralized facility. I'm sure Kevin can pick up the phone and say, Andrea, I need your data. How many calls did you have? Um, I can't exactly do that. People don't know who I am and I'm a little intrusive probably, but it would be great to have that in some easily um, data form. Um, you're, temporary or interim county administrator is a data guy and you know I, I like I can look at that and understand it and I really want to encourage I kind of got off my Eric remarks but I really want to encourage each of the 12 transfer stations to have that transparency and that data available to you so you can make the decisions inform decisions and do good cost benefit analysis. We have opportunities, but you know, it sounds like we would make more money. It sounds like, it looks like, well, let's have the figures. And I encourage you to get the figures to make these decisions, do cost benefit analysis, see those figures before you make decisions and going forward, that's, that's it. Thank you for this. Okay. Uh, Don, anyone else wishing to adjust the committee? Hi, Chairman Connor. Yeah, just to clarify with what uh, Ms. Collins said, uh, and I'll email the full board out, but we are, because of the executive order uh, changing with the governor as of a couple of weeks ago, we no longer are obligated to take those comments via YouTube. So 
I'll send an email to the full board about that. I should have clarified that with everybody a little earlier. So. Okay, thank you. All right, then. Any other business coming from the committee? Yeah, the mayor here is here. And that's for Park on that. Oh, we haven't done that yet. We're doing that next. We got to hurry it up. We got to meet. Okay. I think we're only a few minutes late. You got, you got 11 minutes. 11.45 was the next committee meeting. So considering. Yeah. All right, then. Charlton, a motion to adjourn. Okay.